Hey Tom, it's Andrew Dost, um, formerly of Fun, now of Metal Bubble Trio. Uh, we met some years ago at Danny Marcia's house. You were maybe working on something together, or he and I were. Anyway, the three of us were there, um, and we were talking about Despacito, and you were talking about how um, the word in Spanish means to move slowly through time, whereas in English, to move slowly tends to mean through space. And so um, I found that really fascinating, that like that way of moving slowly is different between language. So my question is, are there any other words that have been, um, you know, tickling your fancy lately in that way? Uh, whether it's a different meaning across language or just something that you find fascinating. Um, is there any, any word that is grabbing you lately? Very curious. Hope you're well. I don't remember that uh, observation, but I, I like it. You know, one word that I've been um, really moved by recently is this word Mondegreen, which my friend Thora actually pointed out to me because the name of my new album is I Am Toward You, but that came uh, by way of a Mondegreen. I was playing Miley Cyrus's song, I Adore You for my wife, because I think it's an amazing song. I was like, oh, check out this song. It's so good. We got to the end of the chorus and the chorus is I Adore You. I adore you, I adore you. And chorus ended and she said, my wife said, wow, that's a really, it's pretty poetic for her. I was like, what do you mean? She said, well, I don't know, it's just an evocative phrase. I am toward you, I am toward you. Like, who is she speaking to? It's such an interesting way to describe that, the romantic feeling. And I was like, the song's called I Adore You. And she realized that she was mishearing the phrase in this really generous way, giving it a totally new meaning, a much deeper meaning in some ways. I love productive mishearings, productive misreadings, finding those productive differences. Um, yeah, so Mondegreen, M-O-N-D-E-G-R-E-E-N. And I actually think the origin of Mondegreen as a word is itself a Mondegreen, like something about like on the green, like on the, somebody heard on the green and they said Mondegreen. I don't know, you have to look it up. Um, on Google or Bing if you prefer Bing. Hey Tom, thanks for doing the hotline. I read that in the run up to the new album, you began practicing very intense meditation and at one point didn't speak for a number of weeks. I wondered what talking was like after an extended period not speaking how strange was it did it change the way you think about talking uh looking forward to your answer thanks so much have a good one the voice as the muscular upshot of the body um versus the voice as the inner voice becomes really intensely apparent when you take time off of expression. I kind of had the sense that the bodily expressive capacity, whatever the voice, as in the speaking voice, is really like a more like a mediating factor in a technology than we tend to recognize. Like in a way, you know, you're using cobbled together pieces to do some expression of this thing called the voice, which is happening in the in the mind. Um, you know, like <laughs> Uh, that's a really cerebral way to put it really literally what I mean to say is when you first start speaking again after these experiences like you feel like a big fat tongue in your mouth um, you feel how long it took you to develop your palate the structure of your jaw um, your breath modulation and all of the things that go into legible speech as an infant and over a life you kind of feel those things again like your tongue feels weird in your mouth etc I think you become really conscious of the timbre and volume of your voice at least momentarily I mean you know these meditations like you have to kind of repeat them over and over because you tend to forget what you learn pretty quickly um, life has a certain way of magnetizing you back to habits and banality in a way um, the non-specialness of everyday life um, i have a song on the new record called a secret within the voice uh, the claim on the song it's kind of like a metaphorical song the way i, I deliver the claim lyrically but the claim of the song is that like no one begins to make a sound in speech except to call out in need and in pain. Um, and I describe like um, a doorstep baby crying again and again, kind of at the core of the human speech slash voice. Um, yeah, really cool question. I really appreciate it. Um.
Hey Tom, it's Dan Weich, uh, just calling to ask you maybe to talk a little bit more about the role of Thomas Merton in either inspiring the record or in other choices that you made, whether in terms of lyrics or themes or composition, excuse me, or any of that stuff. Anyway, looking forward uh, to hearing your answer. Thomas Merton, really interesting, mystical, Catholic monk and iconic pacifistic thinker. Yeah, I mean, there's a book he wrote called New Seeds of Contemplation, which I read in the process of making this record and found very, very connected to my thinking recently. I mean, you know, I'm not Catholic. Uh, or Christian myself, but I tend to be really moved by Catholic thinkers like Merton and Blanchot and Bataille. And I was particularly moved by New Seeds of Contemplation and its attempt to define prayer in a, call it, non-determinative way. You know, I think that most people think of prayer as sort of like a hotline, something like like 1877 wastoids or whatever um, to God. Like, hey God, would love uh, if you could help me out. I'm trying to make the right decision about which used car to buy and can't and would love a, a little tip. Show me a sign. Yeah, whatever. Like that kind of like prayer qua request. Um, and Merton just starts from a very different perspective, which is like this unique form of contemplation that we call prayer is actually a mode of love loving and a mode of in a way like orienting yourself towards the divine which is in a way a disorientation super profound book really straightforward and easy to to get into if anybody's interested in that kind of stuff i mean there's a song on the new record called the only true joy on earth that's the shortened title because the full title is the only true joy on earth is to escape from the prison of our own false self which is a quote from merton and i love that idea of joy coming from figuring out how to escape our false selves. I think I tweeted recently, there's like a Blade lyric where he says, you know, kill the part of you that's not true to the heart of you. And I think that's a great, great motto. There's another Merton lyric on the record, on the song New Confusion, the lead song on the record. I sang, hell is where no one has anything in common with anyone else. And I think that's also a very profound sentiment, especially in an era of uncommoning, call it or like losing what is held in common, um, an era of like pure, you know, kind of like a libertarianism, metaphysicalized, individual dog-eat-dog, -dog, competitive capitalism, etc. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure that my thinking about Merton has only just really begun. Touched uh, by the question, thank you so much. Tom Krell. It's your old friend, Patrick McDermott, here calling. Uh, my pressing question for you, uh, I know you're a huge uh, National Basketball Association fan. Uh, we share this love. Um, and I'm curious, you know, I know you're uh, a monster Dem Denver Nuggets fan. Um, I'm curious what your current non-Nuggets starting five would be. Let's be realistic here and don't just give me the all-star team. Give me sort of the a formal team composition of non-nuggets um, to create a little squadron here. Um, and the uh, follow-up question is, which basketball player influences your music the most? Mm, thanks for the question, Patrick. Starting five, kind of an unpredictable starting five. Right now, I'd say, let's start in the front court. Wendell Carter Jr. at the five from the Orlando Magic. Great player. I've seen him really pester uh, Nikola Jokic over the last few years, and not a lot of guys can do that. Um, at the four, well, let's go with Laurie Markkinen, the beautiful, beautiful boy from Finland. Um, obviously, he's been in jazz, Utah Jazz purgatory for a couple years now. I think he'll probably get traded. He's just extremely talented and versatile. Point guard, Kobe White from Chicago. Should have won the Most Improved Player Award. Doesn't really make sense that they gave it to Maxi, uh, who is just an all-star. So it's kind of like, what does the award even mean? Kobe White's the man. Hell of a season from him. Two guard, how about Mikael Bridges? 
um, who has kind of been in post Phoenix Suns uh, championship loss purgatory. They traded him to Brooklyn, where obviously that team hasn't been serious recently. So hopefully he has a chance to really compete again soon. Super gifted. Seems like a wonderful guy. Um, and then at the three, one time Denver Nugget champion. Kind of uh, had a journeyman's year last year, Indiana, now in Toronto, Bruce Brown. Brown at the three is an interesting choice because it'll give us a lot of versatility. Like he can kind of play up and down the lineup. Uh, Obviously played a lot of point guard for the Nuggets, uh, played a lot of two guard. He can play bigger than his size. So, you know, Laurie and him can kind of be switching the three and the four position, create some cool spatial ambiguity there on the floor. Um, He's just a gutsy and tough dude. And I like him at the three on this particular squad. So that's Kobe White, Mikael Bridges, Bruce Brown at the three, Laurie Markin at the four, Wendell Carter Jr. at the five. I think it's actually a pretty nice squad. The NBA player who most influenced my music, it's got to be Jokic. It has to be Jokic, just because watching him has been such a stunning experience. Um, obviously brought a championship to my Denver Nuggets um, for the first time in franchise history. 3X MVP, plays such a beautiful game. Um, very physical, yet very cerebral. You know, seems to understand the meaninglessness or the sort of like pathetic character of the Protestant work ethic. Good boy, all around, and definitely a huge influence on um, on my music since he since he came into the league. 